excited? Yeah! All right, so person number one is going to fan. All right, what's person number two going to do? Pick. Pick. And then read it to person number three, and they will attempt to answer it. What is the difference between active and passive transport? Active transport requires energy. We want students in small groups talking about science. So with fan and pick, it's great because there's definitely opportunities for each student within one specific group, one small group to talk about the material, whatever that might be for that day. Now, Brian, person number four, is either going to agree, disagree, or extend his thinking based off Anna's question, okay? So anytime, person number three, if you're unsure of your answer, remember you always have backup, someone to support you, or to help change your thinking about this answer. And what I love about Fan and Pick is that each student has a role. Each student is required to talk at some point in the activity, whether it is supporting an answer, agreeing or disagreeing, or just asking the question. So in each stage, a student is responsible for something in the activity. Describe osmosis in your own words. Give an example. Osmosis is like the movement of water. From... They're actively either um, answering the question or listening so they can elaborate further. And we use these general discourse tools, these um, starters or stems, because sometimes students don't know, they have information they want to share, but they don't know how to start. That the reason why. Or how to start that answer, or how to get that conversation going. So these are great because it allows them um, and gives them more confidence in their answer when they're like, I agree, but that we have those little scaffolds set up. I agree because like the cell membrane chooses. What Hopefully we have a better understanding of osmosis, diffusion, and the idea of selectively permeable membranes. Now we're gonna take that understanding and apply it to a new question. I was definitely concerned about the time constraints I thought this might have in my classroom because in theory it seems like it's gonna take a lot of uh, prep work and then in the classroom take up a lot of instructional time. However, what I found is that um, giving the students these tools and uh, making them and allowing them to talk about the science gives them more ownership of it and makes them more invested in the, in the content. All right, my big thing is doing science. And in our classroom, we get to do science, we get to talk about science, so we get to experience it. Lets the corn, it lets the water come in with the iodine into the corn. These strategies are something that I um, have used since I was in grad school, and I find that they are very beneficial for not only the students, but for myself. So they're pushing me out of my comfort zone and allowing me to extend my thinking. How can I attach a strategy to a certain concept, and how can I um, attach a okay, concept to a certain strategy. So outside. it's not only stretching the students' thinking, but also my thinking about science and teaching overall. On both sides. I know this because we did an experiment on this in class with cornstarch and iodine.